SAT fast approaching here are five tricks to answer any question super fast so August SAT is about a month away and one of the biggest things students struggle with is time right time is one of the biggest issues on the SAT whether it be for math section or reading section so here are some ways you guys can honestly answer any question much faster than the average SAT test taker trick number one look at A and B first this might sound a little like stupid but college board actually does have A and B as the answers to certain math questions depending on the question a lot of questions with a lot of variables variables, quadratics, polynomials. A lot of times the answers to these questions are A and B because the trick associated with these problems is plugging in the answer choices into the original equation. So if you plug in A, you might get the answer. If you plug in B, you get the answer. And College Board is essentially rewarding you for being able to find this trick. So a lot of times, if you're that student who ends up almost running out of time and you gotta guess, I would say guess B. B is probably the best choice to guess. A usually isn't correct a lot of times because like the first choice of College Board loves using A as the trap answer. B is a very safe choice and I honestly recommend using B as your safety choice if you have absolutely no idea what you're doing and you just gotta make a quick smart guess. Next trick is to make sure you maximize your mental math abilities. Mental math is something that separates a lot of students who finish the SAT non-calc and calc in like half the time versus going over time and not finishing. If you're able to do mental math you can practically solve any problem without picking up your pencil. And if you're not actually writing things down, you're not actually crossing things out, writing a bunch of numbers, doing a bunch of lines of math and you're just able to look at the problem like, hmm, move this X to this side, subtract one from both sides. I got it. If you're able to do that, which a lot of students are able to do if you practice enough, like personally, I was at that point before I sat down for my first SAT. That's what led me to get like a 790 on my first actual SAT. If you're at that mental math ability level, then things come much quicker for you. And if you're able to solve problems quicker, then you will never have a time issue. In fact, I tell a lot of my students that I tutor or that, you know, use my course that you guys should not be in a position where time is an issue. In fact, you should be racing to see how fast you can finish the entire non calc and calc section while getting every question correct on your practice test as well as your real exam. I mentioned this earlier, but using choices to guide you is something that a lot of students don't do enough. As students who take the reading exam or the math exam should be using answer choices to guide them because a lot of times you might be lost. You don't know exactly how to solve this problem. You don't know what parts of the passage to read. So sometimes the answer choices give you some clues and these clues are plenty for you to actually go to the correct part of the passage, right? Whether it be game mode or end or to look at the correct numbers to actually understand which formulas to use. This is why using the answer choices, you know, comes a long way. And one of my favorite tricks is associated with looking at the answer choices first, and that's elimination three trick. Elimination three trick is a mindset trick where your goal is to eliminate as many of the choices as you can. Another great part of the elimination three trick is it honestly just makes solving the problem much quicker because you don't actually have to actively find things yourself or decide which formulas to use yourself because the choice is basically narrowed down for you. So you're actually tricking college board and be like, thank you for giving me four choices, not three, because now I know exactly what not to do. And now as I do the, you know, the math, as I do the algebra, I start eliminating choices. And once you're left with one choice, that's obviously the answer because you're able to eliminate the rest of the three. And by doing this trick, you're able to not do an entire problem all the way, but do like 30%. And at the 30% point, three choices are already eliminated. So the last one is the choice you're going to go for. And the last trick is to practice and recognize patterns. You see, when you're practicing, you know, practice tests, uh, Khan Academy, uh, mock exams, blue book, whatever SAT you're taking, you're starting to see the same problems over and over again. Now, obviously, I don't mean the exact same problems, but problems that have relatively the same numbers or maybe like the same numbers with different names or the same names of people with different numbers. But the structure of the problem, the concept of the problem and what it's actually you know, asking you is pretty much the same. You've seen a dozen linear question problems, a dozen quadratic problems, a dozen circle questions, all seen the same thing. What's the equation of a circle? What's the radius? What's that inner angle? What's the similar triangle? What's this side equal? All these questions have the same pattern. It's not a variety of questions. So by constantly practicing and recognizing these patterns, you'll be able to solve questions much quicker, like way quicker, because you already know, all right, this type of question, you use this formula for, you associate this formula with this problem, and you're able to solve right away. You don't, you don't waste any time thinking, which formula should I use? Because this is a pattern-based problem. You've seen these problems over and over again. You know exactly how to solve them. And that literally turns a five-minute page of problems into like a one-minute page of problems, which saves you an exponential amount of time. So you can answer questions as fast as possible on the SAT, and you can be the student who finishes the non-calc, calc, boat reading sections with within 50% of the lot of time if you're able to use these tricks, practice, and actually implement them in your study routine and on the exam. If you made it to this part of the video, I want you to comment down below 1500 plus. So one, you'll get a 1500 plus. And second, I know that you watched to this part of the video. And I highly recommend checking out both my SD math course and reading course, as well as the bundle. If you need tutoring, hit me up. Peace.